Hi there, and welcome to Draw With Me. Me being Danny Gregory, guy who draws, like just like you. Maybe you're a guy or a gal or whatever that uh, likes to draw too, but needs a prodding, a little prompt, a little, a little uh, of an appointment on your date book that says, we're going to draw today. That's the idea behind Draw With Me. Every week we get together for mm, 30, 45 minutes, depending on, on how we feel, and we draw. And we draw kind of the same thing, or we use the same thing as a prompt to begin drawing with. And as you'll see emblazoned on the bottom of your screen, it says draw, freedrawingprompts.com. And freedrawingprompts.com is uh, a website that if you go to it, you will find this. This is our list of 101 things to draw. And um, you will have, you will overcome one of the great concerns that we as drawers often have, namely, um, you know, what to draw. Blank, blank page anxiety. Um, what do they call it? Like white f snow, white fever? No, that's something different. Um, what is it called when, when you're like confronted by endless snow, white sort of landscape and uh, you get snow blind? Anyway, where am I going with this? I'm just simply trying to point out to you that uh, if you encounter this need for a, a grain of sand to be placed in the oyster of your creativity so that you may produce a gigantic, gorgeous pearl, well, that's what this list is there for. So go, it's, as the, as the URL would suggest, it is free and it is yours. So today, we're going to draw an insect. We're doing prompt number 40. We don't do them sequentially. I can't really justify why that is. We just kind of do the ones that I thought of this week and felt like doing. But this week is number 40. Draw an insect. I don't know. Maybe you don't want to draw an insect. Maybe you want to draw, I don't know, a cheeseburger. Maybe you want to draw uh, a Volkswagen bug. It's up to you. You draw whatever you like, just try drawing. So, um, yes, hi, Cynthia. I'm glad to see that you're here. Martha Jesus in Guadalajara, Mexico. I bet you it's nicer there than it is here in rainy, cold New York, where, wouldn't you know it, they've just started to dig up my street yet again. We just ended a four-year digging up the street project outside my house, and then this week suddenly they decided, no, they have to come back and replace the water mains or some nonsense. So anyway, my room is reasonably sa uh, soundproof. So hopefully you, Sharon, Deb, Rennie, the big shed, and Mitzi, Melanie, Eliza, Wrinkle, Helen. So nice to see you, Helen. Um, Laura, you will all be uh, able to hear my mellifluous tones unsullied by construction sounds. That's good. So here we go. We're going to draw an insect. Oh, before we do, there are a couple of things I want to tell you about. Um, let's go to the other POV. Here we are. Not to, not to brag or anything, but this is Artist Magazine. Where is it? Here we go. This is Artist Magazine, which is, a, I think, a really nice magazine about drawing and painting. Made all the nicer by the fact that it regularly carries a column from me. Um, and this one just hit my mailbox, I think it was yesterday. And uh, it's got a lot of good stuff in it, a lot of how-tos. But I have this column. What do you do with a dreadful drawing? What do you do with a dreadful drawing, etc.? So this is an article about featuring many um, not terribly great drawings, perhaps, by me. Um, here. 
what do you do with a dreadful drawing? In my book, How to Draw That Talent. So anyway, yes, this is, um, what issue is this? This is the April 2020 issue out now on newsstands. Pick it up if you dare. So what I want to talk about was um, drawing nature. You know, I think that uh, I love to draw nature. Um, I live in, in a place where you would think that there wouldn't be that much nature, right? New York City, Greenwich Village, concrete jungle. But first of all, yesterday I was looking out the window. I was on a conference call and across the way, I saw a gigantic hawk. I think it might be the red-tailed hawk that lives over by the park, but it was sitting there on the balustrade. I mean, it, it, it was easily a foot and a half, maybe two feet tall. And uh, it was kind of looking at me from across and I grabbed my phone. I thought I'll take a picture of it, but my phone didn't do it, ju didn't do it justice, so I didn't. But um, so yes, nature is all around me. There are trees around me and insects. Certainly you would think things like cockroaches, ants, flies, bees. Yes, you see all those things. But every autumn we have the migration of monarch butterflies comes right by my house. That's really beautiful. Although I have to say it's tailed off a bit. I don't know if they're taking another path. But um, yes, there is, uh, there is, as Deb says, there is nature all over the city. It's true. There aren't bulls. There's a statue of the bull down on Wall Street. But other than that, I'm not sure about bull. But yes, there's nature everywhere. And uh, yes, it is nice. Len ah, great. Lenore also had a hawk. Huge, yes. It's amazing and threatening. I mean, these are prime predators, right? Ace, is that what they're called? Ace predators? Yeah. So anyway, so nature is everywhere and um, I enjoy drawing it. And so what I want to do is just talk a little bit about drawing nature. But what I would suggest you do while I prattle on, because I will talk a little bit about it each before I start drawing, um, is look for some um, some reference material. You might want to Google just and look for a picture. That might be fine. You might have an insect around you. You might just draw something from your own imagination if you like. You could draw, throw it on an ink splot and turn it into uh, into a, a tar tarantula. Thistle has said that there's in fact a migration of them every fall. Really? How fast do they move? Are they like single file? I'd like... I'd, or are you just being facetious? I hope so. Um, all right, good. So yeah, so start looking, just look around, see, get some reference material so you can have something to draw from. I'll show you the picture I'm gonna draw from. I don't know how interesting it'll be to you, but we'll get to that. In the meantime though, I wanted to show you some, some things that I really like that are about like this, this kind of thing. Really love this. So this book, Explorer Sketchbook, oh man. It's endless. Let me give you a bit more of a view here. It's really endless. You know, and this, this is just prime inspiration for me. Always has been. Um, ever since I first started drawing in a sketchbook, this kind of thing, like this is Roald Amundsen, you know, the Explorer. This is Audubon. And, uh, you know, I just love this kind of thing where you have like the numbers of the peaks and then they write stuff down there about it boy little maps this is a map of vesuvius showing all the different flows of lava boy this is so cool this henry walter bates I mean, that that kills me i really really love that um you know the, the little annotations and the varieties so gorgeous. So yes, and this like a snake, but with different points of view, or this horrific creature. I think this is like some deep sea creature with various cutaways of what it looks like inside. Come on. I mean, yeah, you could have photos of that, but seriously, look at that. I mean, these are the kinds of things that I used to love to do when I was a kid. Maybe you did too, you know? Right, I hope you're digging this because this, this is the best stuff. 
it's just, it's gorgeous, it's informative, it's moving, it's an adventure, right? It's an adventure in the making to see what you know were just handwritten, and, and look at the writing too, right? So these are like handwritten things. That's pretty nice, isn't it? That is, um, who is this person? This is William Heaton Cooper. Just died about tw not too long ago. And these are his grimy watercolor sets. Beautiful. Charles Darwin. This is Charles Darwin. These are Charles, this is Ch a Charles Darwin sketchbook. Come on. Or this, drawn on stationery. Piles of stuff. Huh. I don't know. Maybe we won't even draw today. Maybe we'll just look at this. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that lettering. Those watercolors. Oh. Do you feel it? Are you feeling this? Are you feeling this? God. This book is the best. In fact, I own two copies of it because I love this book so much. Again, title of it? Explorer's Sketchbooks, The Art of Discovery and Adventure by Hugh Lewis Jones, Carrie Herbert. Let's look at a little bit more of it. Are you whimpering? Are you drooling? Look at that. Beautiful stack of perfectly arranged sketchbooks. This, uh, I love it. Love it. Yes, yeah, so, so this is the original. This is, this is Meriwether Lewis, Lewis and Clark, right? I mean, this is so interesting. Like, you think of Lewis and Clark, and uh, I don't know what you think about them. I mean, Lewis was a bit of a nut, right? He, uh, I think, ended up killing himself when he was quite young, like 35. But, or was it Clark? I think it was Lewis. But um, look at this. this is just this design, just the desire to fill that beautifully hatched fish. And then look at that, in the middle of a sentence, a little drawing of a boat. I don't care if he discovered his, the way the Western Passage. To hell with that, the minor accomplishment compared to those sketchbooks. Beautiful. All right, so hopefully you're fired up. Hopefully by now you've gone and found some incredible piece of uh, reference for yourself and you're ready to draw a critter of some kind, an insect. Okay, so I've been working on this um, this this week. I've been working on um, what I want to draw, my page, because I've been thinking about it, about insect, insects. Okay, so Deb has four reference pictures. That's good. I think that's enough. Do you think it's enough? Are you going to draw four different Critters, that's, that could be. Cynthia. Darwin was agoraphobic after he got back from that trip to the archipelago islands. He was, really? I imagine. I mean, that was probably grueling. It's all get out. So, Dana, you know, I hope you're enjoying those spreadsheets. Um, perhaps there are bugs in the spreadsheets, right? Could be. Bugs. Bugs are everywhere. Um, Helen, 11 foxes on a short 10 minute late night drive. Wow. Did you see their eyes glowing from the headlights by the side of the road? I, I, I don't think I'm, I have a stuffed fox head that I got when I was about 12 years old, mounted. It was the beginning of my former taxidermy collection, but I don't think I've ever really seen a fox live. But I imagine those you don't see in New York. Although last time, I think last time we talked, we talked about coyotes. So there are apparently are coyotes in New York. So, okay, so here's what I'm going to be working on. Let me go away and show you where I'm at. So I've been working on this thing. I've been interested in doing something about hornets. So um, I drew this hornet's face. 
from a macro photograph that I found. And uh, down here is a nest. And over here is a horn kind of hanging upside down, but it's eating the remains of a honeybee. And here, of course, is the green hornet, the famous vigilante, I think began as a radio personality, radio character. What else? Um, oh, this is a Honda Hornet. And here we have, here we have kind of like the, the stuff of a Hornet. So I'm gonna be working in this area and I'm going to be, um, I have some reference. I'll share it with you, but um, don't feel compelled to draw from it. Let's see where it is. I have this, which is quite interesting, which is a whole bunch of hornets. It's like different hornets from different parts of the country. I might come back to that. I'm not sure. We'll see. Um, and then I have just this simple hornet, which is kind of what I plan to do. I plan to kind of put him here flying, flying at me. I'm going to be using India ink and I'm going to be using this pen. It's a pretty good nib. Probably should have had another backup nib with me, but I don't. So I'll be living with this nib. Living with the nib. <laughs> Whatever that means. So yeah, let's draw, let's draw, start drawing critters. Let me get rid of this so you can see what the hell I'm doing. If that's what you want to do. I'd rather you weren't looking at me. I'd rather you were doing your own drawing, but you know. Maybe, maybe you like the sound of, isn't that a great sound? Sound of uh, nib scratching paper. Nib scratching paper. What is that called? Uh, AMS? A A S A M S? A A R S M? Do you know what I'm talking about? There's a there's a whole kind of thing on YouTube um, of sort of what's almost called like audio porn. It's not really porn at all, but it's it's this kind of recordings of certain kinds of sounds that people make very close to the microphone, and that people report having all kinds of physical reactions to them, pleasurable physical reactions. It's almost like having your back scratched or something, where you hear the sound of people talking very close to the microphone like this and clicking their mouths as they talk and, and doing things like brushing hair very close to the microphone. And people get all these kinds of physical reactions to it. Um, I think it's sort of the opposite of having uh, nails on a blackboard, you know, that kind of sound. But, but so maybe there are going to be people tuning in just to hear the sounds of my scratchy pen. Scratch, scratch. Yeah, I'm going to do it by the microphone so you can hear it really carefully. You ready? Woo -hoo -hoo. I love that sound. Yes. Um, yeah, so, so I'm getting in. You know, it's nice to draw with a dip pen. If you've never done it, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't care about the sound. Um, ASMR. Thank you, Don. Yes. Does it, do any of you guys have this reaction to it? Like, have you? Do you have that kind of wow, orgasmic kind of reaction to these very in, kinds of sounds. I, I, I mean, I wish I did. It sounds really awesome. But uh... anyway, so the dip pen is, it's just a great instrument. It, uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but it is, it is, uh, it's so flexible and responsive. And um, I think it's kind of like people who like to drive a manual stick shift, you know, it's sort of like that kind of a thing where you, 
it's just it's a bit more of a hassle but it's really really responsive you know you get you can just get so many different kinds of um, line qualities and 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 even within the same stroke you can get all different kinds of uh, thicknesses and co really colors I call them colors of course they're not literally colors but well, actually there that just was that right there is um, soft soft gray wrinkle if you're having a problem with your internet um, you, we, I'm hoping that that's not me I'm hoping it's simply um, but you know if you hold on for one second no, I think I'm on. I'm on a fairly. St wow, is this so a lot of you are having this problem? Is it all of YouTube that's that's the problem, or is it just my corner of it? I hope it's not. I hope this recording is going to go through. Okay. People think it's on my end. Wow, really interesting. I'm sorry about that. Um, If anybody's having a perfectly great experience, let me know. Then I'll know it's not me. It's not me causing this problem. Sarah hates the noise. The noise of scratching pens? I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you this, if for some reason you continue to have a bad bad experience, I will be upload, I'll upload a fresh recording of this so that you um, can watch it later on. I apologize. I don't know, I don't know why I would be having a bad thing, but I'm having fun drawing this. Maybe use the time to draw. Maybe that's the answer. to know what to do about the fact that some of you are having a problem. Well, let's just carry on. I'm, that's all I can do right now, let's carry on. You know, drawing insects is is interesting because they are so, they're like, um, they're almost like machines in the way that they look and the way they're put together. You know, they feel like they're, um, they're, they're just made of segments and that makes them relatively easy to draw because you just draw one segment and the segment next to it. You know, they, they're, they're a lot easier than say mammals, I think. That's just my feeling. What's your experience so far, besides the horrors of the internet, of poor connections? Beautiful legs they have, these hornets.
took some liberties here with his stinger because uh, they don't actually have a little thing there, but I just wanted to make it look a little, a little more lethal. Um, yeah, apparently horns do kill people. I mean, not often. Most people are fine, but occasionally they can kill people. People can die. Clicky the what's it called the um, the Asian giant hornet. That apparently is a uh, scary one. So I'm going to call this one figure six. I like these little, f just saying figure, you know, it just, it just feels like a kind of thing you would say in a nature book. So I'm sorry, some of you, um, well, I see you continue to have problems. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll share this recording. If you have signed up with Draw with me, for, if you've signed up for the prompts list, um, I can email you because I'll know who you are. And I can tell you, here is a uh, recording. But failing that, I'll have to just check back in and see, because I'll try and get to it as soon as we finish. As soon as we hang up, I'll say, let's upload a fresh, because I think it's recording fine probably at my end. It's just somehow, for some reason, not doing a great job of getting to you. Oh, I forgot his antennas. Got to get them in there. Let's get those antennas. I have to say that I had a very pleasurable experience, and I really am sorry that you didn't, uh, if in fact that was the case, because um, these are nice drawings. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of your pain. I'm aware of your pain. Um, but uh, I'm not sure what to do about it. So I just kept drawing. Um, yes. No, I, I'm, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you, I know. So, anyway, this is the situation. I will, I will remedy it in some way. So stay on. I see most of you are leaving, which is understandable. Um, but I do see. I do see. I see. You know, maybe it was a bug in the system. There you go. Full circle. The theme is complete. Some hornet has flown into the internet um, and uh, has contaminated it. Well, in any case, it's a, it's a big drawing, big page um, in this big sketchbook. I like the sketchbook a lot. Um, I've done a number of nice drawings in it, and uh, yeah, that was that. All right, well, next week, I promise I will look into this and see what I can do um, to, to overcome this. Um, let's cut it short, and, um, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll come back. Yeah, all the spinning is making Lisa dizzy. Well, 
I hope you've enjoyed this recording that you're watching later after the internet problems died down. <laughs> and, uh, well, keep drawing. I think Bo, Bo has the right point of view. Keep drawing. And uh, maybe this is all a test. Maybe this is purposely sabotaged so that you wouldn't be distracted by me, but that you would be focused on drawing your own thing. In either case, thanks for being here, and I'll see you next week. And meanwhile, I'm going to check on what the heck's going on with the internet. I will fix the internet, although I don't think it's me, because I've this is exactly the setup I've used many times before to talk to you. So thank you. It's been fun bugging out, and I'll see you next time.